Okay, welcome. Uh, we're going to talk about Purgatory today. Uh, second book of Dante from the Divine Comedy. And um, we're going to start with the first uh, first two sentences here of uh, the opening canto. Uh, do you know the, the comedy has three parts with the Inferno, the Purgatory and uh, the Paradise. So we've been through the Inferno earlier and now we're going to look at the Purgatory, which is in some ways it's the middle part, but it's also the, the metaphor for transformation and for renewal and for rebirth and the place where uh, the souls are uh, coming to uh, rinse and uh, get, get cleanse themselves of their sins before they ascend into heaven. So the beginning is, for better water still, the little bark of my poetic powers hoists its sails and leaves behind that cruelest of the seas. And I shall sing about that second realm where man's soul goes to purify itself and become worthy to ascend to heaven. Here let death's poetry arise to life, O muses, sacrosanct, whose leech I am, and let Calliope rise up and play. Her sweet accompaniment in the same strain that pierced the wretched magpies with the truth of unforgivable presumptuousness. And then some of the introduction of the, the kind of brilliant beauty of the purgatory. Uh, the Tender tint of orient sapphire, suffusing the still reaches of the sky as far as the horizon deeply clear. So from the beginning, it's just worth noting here that to, to change the atmosphere from the, the hopelessness of the inferno and um, the whole mood that's set when they go through the, to the gate into the inferno in the third canto in the first book, you have the inscription in stone and then the last sentence is Leave all hope behind, you who enter. So the Italian is lasciata ogni speranza, voi chi entrate. And now it opens this purgatory part of the work with for better waters now. So immediately you have a sense of hope and that things will improve. And then he mentions the little bark of my poetic powers. So the boat is an important metaphor in the whole work. And it's continuously growing as a symbol of um, both Dante's, like the, the pilgrim in the work, is growing in experience and in knowledge. And we as a, as a reader will also then, the story is growing in us. And Dante as a writer is also becoming more confident in his, his, uh, his poetry and the whole mission of his, his work that he's set out to do. So it hoists the sails and leaves behind that cruelest of the seas. This is then just making it clear that Inferno is now left behind. And it's just thinking about the second realm where a man's soul goes to purify itself. And then he calls on the muses. So this is the, a reference to Greek mythology where they invoke the muses before they want to do something artistic. Um, so got arts, literature, even science. So you had nine muses, daughters of Zeus and one of the Titans. And they're all like deities uh, or goddesses of inspiration. And the leader is Calliope, and she's uh, the muse of epic poetry. So he calls upon her uh, to help to help him uh, in this continuous journey. And then the tender tint of the orient of sapphire. So this is also, like in the first book, you don't see once you enter into the inferno, you don't see the skies. It's all inside of the earth, and it's dark and it's claustrophobic, and it, it gets kind of more and more cramped. So now it's, it's open up. You see, just the words here is like the sky, the horizon, uh, tender tint. All of this, like the language is changing to to influence the mood when you're reading, and like a different emotion. So renewed my eyes delight. I found myself free of the deathly atmosphere that had weighed heavy on my eyes and heart. So both for the pilgrim and for us as readers, this is, this is a relief now. Okay, and then, and then to my right, I turned to contemplate the other pole and there saw these four, those four stars the first man saw and no man after him. This is a, a reference to the Garden of Eden, like the first, the first two people and then the skies over the Garden of Eden is then something is different from what we would normally see from, from the Earth. So 
there's a reference here and the four stars we'll get back to that later but there's lots of symbolism in that and then virgil and dante meet cato let me say i saw near me an ancient man alone whose face commanded all the reverence that any son could offer to his sire long flowing was his beard and streaked with white as was his hair which in two tresses fell to rest upon his chest on either side the rays of light from those four sacred stars struck with such radiance upon his face it was as if the sun were shining there so cato is um, a historical person from the roman empire uh, cato the younger and he is yeah, he was seen as the giant of uh, moral integrity and stoicism and he had a long feud with caesar and eventually he he lost that feud and he ended up taking his own life to stay true to himself and his uh, principles not to compromise and he became this iconic figure for moral uh, character at the time so he is then the guardian of the purgatory mountain which is oh, sorry. again it's a symbol of of the work you have to do to cleanse yourself of the sins in this tradition from the medieval times going into the renaissance um so his uh, integrity is then what guards this mountain and then he says to them who are you two who challenged the blind stream and have escaped from the eternal prison he said moving his venerable locks who guided you who served you as a lamp to light your way out of the heavy night that keeps the pit of hell forever black are all the laws of god's abyss destroyed have new decisions now been made in heaven so that though damned you come up to my cliff so he's, he's asking virgin dante why they come out of the side of the mountain this is through their journey through the inferno which is to, into the center of the earth and then they climb up and they come out on the side lower side of the mountain so he cato is wondering has something changed have people suddenly started coming from the inferno after all and to climb up the mountain and then virgil answers uh, my leader quickly seized me by the arm his words his touch the way he looked at me compelled my knees and brow to reverence then he addressed him to cato not on my behalf have I come here? A lady sent from heaven asked me to guide this man along his way. So this is a reference to the beginning of the work where Virgin Mary sees Dante lost in the dark wood in the opening of the first book. And she tells uh, Saint Lucia to go to Beatrice. And then Beatrice goes down to uh, Virgil in a limbo. and tells him, go off and pick, pick up Dante and take him on a journey to teach him about human nature and about the sins and about the salvation uh, to like ultimately just save save his life and save his soul and in some sense also just improve his life this is a um, the work is about the afterlife but it's constantly references to more uh, it's full of practical advice in your own life how to change your life for the better and kind of the temptations and the pitfalls in life and then the, the war, if you make some mistakes how to change it for the better and like how to uh, how to make up for things so um and then also just have to mention this that virgil is the symbol of uh, knowledge and of history and of literature and of uh, reason and kind of the intellectual life so he's the one that for the first two books is the teacher of dante to kind of teach him about the world um, and then Let's see he says uh, virgil says to cato already i have shown him all the damned i want to show him now the souls of those who purge themselves of guilt in your domain and then uh, so this is okay with cato as one of a few examples about cato's integrity virgil is giving cato some compliments uh, also about his uh, his beautiful wife and some he says some nice things and then Cato says uh, thank you but why the flattery there's no need to flatter me 
your hair on the center from the heavens and that's enough so, and that's the most important thing so it's it's put there both to uh, show the, uh, uh, an aspect of Kato but also to understand the aspect of the whole purgatory and this cleansing process that it's about the facts <laughs> and it's it's about to separate the reason from the emotion okay so then Kato says to Virgil go with this man see that you gird his waist with a smooth reed take care to bathe his face till every trace of filth has disappeared so those are the two practical advices he's giving me and I mean that the reed around his waist is for um, for humility, but now Dante needs humility to climb the mountain and to learn the lessons that are necessary. And then bathe his face is to, to cleanse himself of the sins uh, that until every trace have, has disappeared. So then they go down to the shore and try to find where to start the climb and like for a slope. So uh, there's a more, more of the, the beautiful poetry here. When we had reached a place where the cool shade allowed the dew to linger on the slope, resisting a while longer the sun's rays, my master placed both of his widespread hands gently upon the tender grass, and I, who understood what his intention was, offered my tear-stained face to him. And he made my face clean, restoring its true color, once buried underneath the dirt of hell. At last we touched upon the lonely shore that never yet has seen its waters sailed by one who then returned to tell the tale. So the first part here is that uh, Virgil is, is uh, touching the, the ground, the tender grass, and then washing the face of Dante. And then for the reed, this is the last three sentences. O miracle! When he pulled out the reed, immediately a second humble plant sprang up from where the first one had been picked. So this metaphor is very strong for both the purgatory, the second book, and for the whole work. So this is the whole theme of rebirth through this the nature picture that you pick up a, a reed, and then a new one is immediately there. So this is kind of a, a cycle of, of uh, rebirth and renewal, which is um, what they're going to go through in the second book. So. Um, and there's one last thing also with um, with Cato that he has um, um, his uh, his beard is uh, streaked with white as with his hair. This is a tiny little detail, but it's also um, it's there to symbolize the, the blending of um, the the souls, the situation in the purgatory that is. There's still a bit of bad, but then it's getting better. So that's that's um, the point of, of his blended um, beard and his uh, his hair. Uh, okay. So on the note of the the last miracle and this picture of an, uh, of the reed that's pulled out, um, I'm going to stop here, and then I'm going to talk about the second canto in the next episode. So thank you for watching. I uh, hope some of this was interesting, and um, uh, have a great day.